So you know the deal by now. Chelsea won, Arsenal won. It was a stalemate at the end of it, but could have easily been won by Arsenal with a couple of guilt edge chances late in that game. Started off with a Palmer fizzer that was saved. Not sure if Palmer did anything else. Some people say he gave the ball to Neto for his um goal, which cool, fair enough. Um, Gusto header over the bar in the first half for them. Obviously, there was the Havertz offside goal that was chalked off and the shushing the crowd probably didn't work in his favor and could have actually shut the crowd up late in the second half. But before that, we had Martinelli with a finish and Overgaard dink over the top. I think that's his first start in, what, about two months or something? So an assist on his first game back, which is not a bad thing at all. And um, yeah, Pedro Neto's equalizer 10 minutes later, a great shot from outside the box, found space in the middle, drifted across, left foot, bang, bottom corner. Um, and um, Raya just could not um, save that, so great um, great goal there. And then in the 87th minute, I think it was Marino had a shot saved, and Trossard hit it straight over the bar, and then in the literal last kick of the game, there was a ball across that if Trossard had left, Havertz was 100% tapping that into the back, and then I have no doubts about that, but Trossard decided to take it himself, missed it, went past Havertz, and went out for a goal kick. Missed the winner at the end. And this is how Turkish reacted on the big sixes watch along and also in his post match after that. Oh! Oh my god! Sanchez! Sanchez! Oh my god! Sanchez! Oh my god! What I now miss? forgive you. For the, early, for the earlier antics and the bullshit, what I miss? forgive you. Now Tur you're forgiven. Turkish now left, you're forgiven. Turkish has left the building. Now this you're is... forgiven. Turkish oh, now you're hey, forgiven. Hey, we don't own the building, Turkish. Now you're forgiven. No damage. Turkish now you're forgiven. Building. Please that don't is, cause damage. He's off. I don't know. Who's this? Me. Who's this? Whoa! Oh my oh! god! That's not nice. Oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. That's, that's... oh my okay. god, that's a great ball as well. Just, just for safety reasons. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great ball. After all this shit I was just talking. That that's a great ball. He's onside. He's onside anyway. He's onside. That would have. Oh. Two man's mistake! Two man's mistake! If he left it, if he left it, Hammers taps it in. Trossard. That is shocking. Trossard. 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 What do I see? Trossard. I see someone's He's title taking it off. fading. He's taking it off Kai Havertz's title. Get off the floor. He's go, go, go. taking it off of him. I see someone's Get title. off the floor. Kai, Kai Havertz nearly scored a last minute winner. Get off the, the fucking floor, man. Bro. Kai Havertz. I can't believe Kai this, Havertz bro. nearly scored. If he left a that, Havertz, if he left that, Havertz taps in. Last minute winner, he would have got at the bridge. That's a craziness. Trossard. Trossard, you know, that's mental. That is thing. My head would have been gone. Those same, same people are the XG merchants. Well, I'm looking at XG here. Chelsea got a higher XG than us. Possession merchants. It was 50-50. We was a bit more fluid with Odegaard in there. No shit, Sherlock. I don't think we need a private investigator to, to know that we're going to be a bit more fluid with Odegaard in the side. But I did say Odegaard isn't the answer to the problems we've been facing in the last few weeks and throughout this season. One man doesn't change the approach we've seemingly moved into week in, week out. Turkish clearly was not happy. Big ups to Uncle Grizz, the community man, for recognising those glasses were potentially going to be picked up and pegged across that studio, potentially injuring one of the guys there, if not damaging the studio. And you can hear Grizz say, well, Turkish, this studio's not ours. Please don't, don't do anything stupid. And clearly was not happy at the end of the game for obvious reasons that we know now. And also read one of the angriest sponsored promos in a video that I've ever heard. Check it out in the description down below, like every video you're about to see in this video here as well. And moving along to the next bit is Mr. AFTV himself, Don Robbie, adjoining him, or adjoining, I should say, with Bavs, a uh, AFTV alumni, if you will. Some will say that he got axed from AFTV because of his use of social media to prop himself up. Some will like to beg to differ, but that is what it is. Robbie is still adamant that Arsenal are not out of this title challenge yet. Even though they're nine points behind Liverpool, even though this was a must win for them, they say on the basis of play, it ain't the worst thing. There is still life in this Arsenal team, apparently. And this video and the video you're about to see as well have been one of the most downvoted videos I have seen on an AFTV, on AFTV channel, I should say, in recent memory at least. Have a look. We needed to win, really. Yeah. We really needed to win. If we're being completely honest with ourselves, we needed to win, right? To, to, yeah. to really give us that drive. Mm. However, right, getting a point, we haven't lost a game. It's a really difficult place to come to. It's a much more encouraging performance. 
you've got to say after that, we ain't out of it yet. We're not out of it. It's going to be really tough to, to win the league from, from the position that we're in, but we are definitely not out of it. You know what I mean? We are in November, mm. early November, mm. right? And the league finishes in May, right? And we've seen, we've been ahead at Christmas. We've seen other, Liverpool have been ahead. Mm -hmm. Liverpool were ahead last year, going into the final stretch. Liverpool were ahead, they lost to Palace, Sweet. they lost to Everton. All of a sudden, you know what I mean? Their, their title challenge fell apart. So that's why when you're talking to Liverpool fans, they're being cautious about it. I think had it have been City ahead at nine points, because of what they've done in the past, you probably think to yourself, now, nah, no chance. But don't get me wrong, the, the, you know, yeah, we, you we need to go on an incredible run yeah. to, to have a chance of winning this, this league. But we're not out of it. I don't think we're out of it. I, I don't think I could sit and be confident right now because we are nine points behind. But I, I still believe quite a lot, to be honest. Mae it's delusion speaking at this point. Um, and maybe I've got Taz Waterbottle over there. But uh, no, nah, seriously, I, the way I see it this season, I said it, I think I tweeted this last week. I don't see no, none of the top three, in my eyes, getting 90 plus points. And therefore, I think there's more room for error. Maybe it's just coping at this point. But I've seen Liverpool, Liverpool's performances this year. And I think with the games they have coming up, they will, in my eyes, drop points. I think City have dropped points as well. And that's where Arsenal are getting a bit lucky with it. Um, and I think that's why I think, yeah, I'm not going to rule us out with 27 games left to go. So you saw those dislikes. They're legitimate. I don't think rivals are going to go in there and bombard or whatever it is that they do. Uh, yeah, the mass dislike videos like that. And that's probably Arsenal fans not being too pleased with what Robbie and Babs are saying because they still have this belief that Arsenal can do something when the last 11 games have really showed not much apart from a good few performances. Obviously, the Man City away match, a win, a narrow win in the Champions League, away win to Aston Villa. Again, shaky, dodgy. DJ has been saying that Arsenal do not look like the Arsenal of last season. And you'll see him later on in this video as well. But... With the, well, some will say delusions that they are still in a chance of winning this league. You also have the opposite to that, which is the belief that this league is done and dusted for another season. And of course, you've got your regulars like Lee Gunner, but also joining him, Troops and Dan Potts. Super duper, scary, dangerous champions. Oh my God, they're amazing. They're, they need to be stopped, Arsenal, in phase five, 800 million deep. Sack this guy today, two nights. I want to see Comunicado Oficial. Super Duper Mick has left the club by mutual consent. Get rid. It's done. Give it to Airpod Albert until the rest of the, until the end of the season. Or until we find another manager. He's more qualified than our actual manager, by the way. Just go through his CV. Yeah, again, another boring, lackluster, dog shit performance. Absolutely horrible to watch. Arsenal aren't winning the title this season, people. I think we knew that anyway. Forget the points and how many we are behind. The way we are playing right now proves we ain't good enough to win a title. We've regressed, we've gone backwards, and although the performance wasn't a shambles today against Chelsea, there was no cutting edge. There's still nothing going forward that fills me with any positivity. I think we lack fluidity. I think we're very slow. I think we lack movement. I think we actually lack a little bit of pace and power at the moment. And I know that Saka and Martinelli are back and things are looking a lot better than potentially they were, but let's just be real. We just ain't good enough. In my opinion, title's officially gone, bro. You get me? Nine points off the pace. The goal difference is ridiculous. The places we still have to go, blood. I see a lot of Arsenal fans saying that, oh, we've played the difficult games away from home. Tottenham, Chelsea, City, Aston Villa, and we've done well there. My issue isn't with the big teams, it's with the lesser teams, blood. You get me? The Bournemouth away, where we lost. Fulham away, where we lost last year. Southampton away, where we lost in another title race. You get me? They are the games that I worry about, blood. Do you understand? So, Lee Gunner, the most extreme out of them, saying sack Arteta tonight, he needs to go, etc., etc. I get that, fair enough. Um, whether or not you want to be on his boat, completely up to you. Dan Potts, performances have not been there. Um, trips as well, you know, this, this ain't it here, it's just not happening. Nine points adrift. Why should we have any belief that we are going to capitalize on anything? Liverpool need to lose three games. We need to win three games. Neither team look like doing what they need to do at the moment, i.e. Liverpool to lose games for Arsenal or Arsenal to lose games for Liverpool to keep a distance going. Of course, City are in amongst all that as well. 
And with that, we go back to Babs. Of course, he's been one of the main advocates of saying, I'm not worried about Liverpool, don't care about Liverpool. Man City are still the team for me. But then, of course, last, uh, well, not last season, at the end of the uh, season, before the um, announcement of slot, everyone said once Klopp leaves, Liverpool are finished, Liverpool are nowhere, the squad is crap, etc., etc. And that is another video which you can check out uh, following this one. But let's go to Babs and hear what he had to say regarding Liverpool and this title race or challenge whatever you prefer look if it was look, the way i'd see it if it was man city that were nine points ahead oh, game over. it would be game over, game over. I, I, so why I, do we think liverpool games why do we think we yeah nine is a lot i mean it is a lot forget the fact lot. that liverpool have van dyke and three. salah and deserve to be up there i mean what about do i do i see liverpool dropping points in three games yes yeah i do but yes. and, but, but, I do. but but then us not dropping any Thing is, though, I think with our performances getting better and better in the last two games, I think we're going to go on a run. I can sense it. But my big thing for the thing that I'm using the most to cope right now is the fact that we've had so many of these difficult games in the early part of the season. Mm. You've had Chelsea away, Villa away, City away, and a few more, and Spurs away as well. I haven't seen City go to those grounds just yet, and I haven't seen Liverpool go to those grounds just yet either, or most of them at least. And so I think that's my copium right now. Mm -hmm. And um, it might come across delusional right now, but we will only see this back in a few months' time if Arsenal on a winning streak. Because football is like this, you know, if we had won this game, we're back in the title race. We lose this game, we're out of the title race. It's too reactionary in my point. Like I said, the narrative keeps on changing for Liverpool. First, it was Arna Slot is nowhere near Klopp. When Klopp leaves, you're finished. Your players are crap. You have an average team. They're old. You have dusty players. And now all of a sudden, it's become, well, you inherited a great squad. Slot knows what he's doing. The players are fantastic. They're world class. And you must win the league now. You're not going to put that pressure on us. You're not going to spin it on us that easily. It's only November. As Bav says, there's still plenty of games to play in this league. We're only but, what, a quarter through, whatever it is. So very early to be talking like that. But a separate video on Liverpool's stance on that, if you'd like to watch it. But is it now a top four race for Arsenal? Um, they're still banking on Liverpool falling off. I know Egal mentioned that a fair few times. Babs clearly is as well. A lot of people saying, yeah, there's still Liverpool maybe won't be there towards the end of the season. We'll, we'll wait and find out. Maybe City will actually, you know, restart and, you know, hit the NOS and race through to the finish line. We'll see what happens. Maybe Arsenal do get a revival. We don't know yet. We'll see. But one thing that we can see is that the team is not playing exactly well struggling to score goals and i'll do that have what it takes to get those consistent wins that they need to start creeping back up the table that is the question mark so overall it's a better point for probably a better point for arsenal than it is for chelsea because arsenal still stay within some touching distance if you will but now we move over to tottenham hotspur doing the most tottenham hotspur thing ever giving another team three points their first three points of the season, just like they did away to Crystal Palace a few weeks ago. They gave Ipswich their first three points at White Hart Lane. Would you believe it? They were 2-0 down at home to Ipswich. Bentacor had to score a consolation goal. They had all their players back by Van der Ven, so no real excuses if you think about it. They had Son back, they had Solanke there, Madison, they had Brendan Johnson who missed a chance in the uh, in the first half and it was a, you thought it was going to go in, but he just went outside the post. Um, Vicario in goals is just a shambles. Expressions called him um, a vampire. He's just you know, allergic or afraid of crosses, all sorts of things. And a lot of people have also questioned Ange's time. Is the top four at risk now? So much like Arsenal, who are looking now to maintain the top four rather than the you know, title title race at the moment, at least, from what we can see based on the results in the football we've watched. Tottenham Hotspur now as well. Not in a great place. And where we do have a great place is where we're going to start with this, and that is Deji. We must be Tinkerbell FC. Yeah, the fairy godmother. Because we are the team that give teams who ain't won a game all season, we're the ones who give them hope. We should be called Hope FC, Dorothy, the Wizard of Oz, clap, hit your heels. We gave Crystal Palace their first win of the season. Now at home, at home, we've given Ipswich their first win of the season. We are rubbish. I can lose a football match. Football, you can lose. Anything can happen on the day. But I don't understand 
how you can be lackluster against a team that hasn't won a single game. Surely you're telling the lads in the dressing room, lads, they've not won a single game. Get the early goal, their heads drop. That's it. Someone in my chat earlier said, Harry Redknapp would do a better job. I agree. Bring back Harry Redknapp. Do you know what I'm saying? Stick him in the right position. Keep it simple. Yeah? And I've a mo- You know, because I thought Buster Coglu was a motivational speaker. I don't see no motivation in these brothers when they come out on the pitch. So for me, you know what? We're, we're not much better than West Ham, to be honest, Lawless. You're right. Me and you sitting there having, having lunch together. You're right. I, when I see your club, I see my club. We are the same. Rubbish. Much like Digi, Tobes was not too pleased either. The squad, the manager, that being Aussie Ange, Big Ange, Postacoglu, High Lines, mate, and all that good shit. Taking the piss out of Aussies, which is fair. No problems with it. By all means, take the piss all you want. We do it with you, with you pommies. I was about to say Yanks. That's for the Americans, but that's for another stream, I suppose. But yeah, the manager, the players, not at it where they could have won the game and potentially gone above Arsenal and Chelsea. They decided that, no, nah, we're just going to concede two goals and not play our football, lose the game 2-1, and give teams a little bit of life. The team are a reflection of the manager. Inconsistent in your changes that you want to make in games. Inconsistent in your ability to actually change the momentum of games for Tottenham. It's not even just on the manager. It's just everything. Everything about this club is just the worst. In the lead up to this game, almost every single Spurs chat I was in expected a win, but were also nervous of the fact that, yo, this is actually a, an important game for Tottenham. Off the back of a big win against Aston Villa and the fact that Spurs would go third today with a win. Like, all of these factors made Spurs fans visibly upset. The Spurs fans I spoke to, why? Because they knew that Spurs are just not the team that takes advantage in these moments. We are the team that goes and does the exact opposite. And then what, to, what made matters worse was Ipswich were without a win heading into this game. And I think that was the nail in the coffin for most of the Spurs fans I spoke to who were expectant of three points just because of the level of opposition we were playing, but acknowledged that, yo, this could easily go left because it's just Tottenham. It's just what we do. We are the exact team that relishes playing crap in these moments, dropping points in these moments. So with Tobes basically saying it's just what we do, it is the history of the Tottenham doing the most Spursy thing ever, losing at home to a team who's not won a game all season. Very Spursy. One man who was at the game himself, Witnessed it in person and absolutely cooked the shit out of his own club players. Manager is the one and only expressions. These men are criminals, blood. Absolute criminals, blood. I warned them. I said, if you lose before international break and then Ipswich again, it's Crystal Palace all over again, bruv. Ain't won a league game and you come to Tottenham and we open our legs. Gynecologist, bro. Open ourselves up, blood. That's what we do, fam. We lay on our backs, bro. That's what we do. Tottenham hot thought spurs. They're thoughts. You get me? Hot scrubs. That's what they are, bro. I'm telling you, bruv. Stealing a living, fam. Stealing a living, bro. We got a goalkeeper that's afraid of crosses, blood. You get me, fam? Honestly, bro. A vampire in goal, blood. You get me, fam? First communion. Send him to church. He needs to learn Christianity, bro. He's afraid of crosses, bruv. We've got a left back. It's his destiny to get cooked, blood. You get me, fam? Oh, my... It's his destiny to get doggied by all opposition, fam. Pedro Sorrow, bruv. Pedro Porridge, bruv. Pedro Poro, fam. Absolute scrub. All you want to do, yeah, is be riling up the fans and that. And when you have a shocking game and we want to call you out, you're acting surprised. That's like you got amnesia, blood. You get me? Like you got Alzheimer's, blood. Brother, Romero, bruv. This brother has been getting bullied all season, blood. All you want to do is go in with two flipping heavy challenges there, injuring yourself, bruv. You got bullied, fam. I'm telling you, you get bullied all season, you've been getting bullied, fam. You're losing in the air, losing your jewels, you're losing everything, fam. Brother, our back, it was non-existent, fam. I'm telling you, it was non-existent, blood. Hospital gown, bruv. We're just open, fam. 
Nobody does it better than expressions, especially when it's to his own club. It is a thing of magic. And finally, the last person we're going to look at is Sava, Football Heritage TV, going over some damning stats and facts about Aussie Ange Postacoglu, manager of Tottenham Hotspur FC, because some of these readings ain't pretty. When he rattles off the, when I say rattles, like reads, the points won as opposed to games, as opposed to how many lost. When Nudo Espirito Santo was sacked for less at Tottenham Hotspur than what Ange is on right now, not by much as well. And the fact that these players don't have what it takes, the manager don't have what it takes, it is more bad than good, as he says. People will point out the good, but for me, uh, the, the bad is starting to overtake. And when we look at this, right, Tottenham have conceded first in 13 of 15 home games in 2024. Right, there's the first one. 13 of 15. Right, that is shocking. Spurs, before international breaks in the last year, lost, 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 lost. Again, showing absolutely zero mentality. Um, somebody put, put put this post, whoever Russ Williams is, said Nuno gone after 15 points from 10 games and just 16 from 11, right? And is paraded as this great forward attacking manager. Um, we look at this one. And just said, that's down to me. That's my responsibility. The inconsistency we're having this year. Ultimately, it does come, come down to me and my approach. And it's something I need to try and fix and see if I can help the players. See if I can help. And the last one, Jose, is not written down there. Tottenham Hotspur in the last 18 Premier League games. We're going, what, half a season? One game less than half a season. 22 points and 10 defeats from our last 18. That is absolutely horrendous, Jose. No matter how much the happiest of fans want to try and spin that. Stats are stats. You can make them say whatever you want. In this case here, they back up the fact that Tottenham Hotspur have not been great. Ipswich, of all teams, getting a win away from home. Everyone would have banked on an easy three points for Tottenham Hotspur, but it wasn't to be. Spurs being Spurs, does Ange have what it takes to manage this Tottenham team? Remember, he always wins in his second year, so we'll wait and see what happens there. They do have a League Cup to contest for as well against Manchester United in the quarterfinals. Are the players good enough? We've seen X roast his own players. It's his destiny to be doggied repeatedly for destiny you doggy. That's crazy. That's crazy talk there. And... Does Ange need more, need more players, maybe? Are the players not good enough? Will Levy, uh, I'm sorry, Daniel uh, uh, Levy, Levy, will he pay up? Probably not. Players that they should have had, they didn't get. So, interesting time for Spurs. But interesting for Arsenal as well. International break now, a couple of weeks where we hope all our players come back fit, happy and healthy. And then we can kick on with our respective clubs and do whatever we need to do. Challenge for the league go for top four, try and get back into the top four, try and stay out of relegation, whatever it may be. May your team win, unless you're facing Liverpool, in which case then I hope you lose. But with that being said, thank you for watching. appreciate you all. Drop a like, drop a comment if you would like to do so. Subscribe if you enjoy this sort of stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Description's down below for everybody as well. See us.